Hello, today we're talking about volume. How loud is loud and why does it matter? Very nice. Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Uh, just to explain what's going on here, we are in COVID-19 social distancing. This is the first day we've been back filming, so we're taking all the sensible precautions we can to remain socially distanced from one another. And I'm pretending that I'm in New York and Mick is my taxi driver. Yes. <laughs> you know what the title of that book should have been? Uh, um, <gasps> yes, I can. If Frank Sinatra says, says I can. I can. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, Boom. Anyway, yeah, right off the bat. sorry, spinal tap quite right off the right off the bat there. Okay, we're talking about volume today, uh, and we'll explain what's happening in the show in a sec. What I'm going to say right from the beginning there, Daniel, mm -hmm. that was almost impossible to play the guitar. Yes, for me. I don't know what we were under 70 dB. On under the, 70 dB. On the dB meter. I could probably, through the perspex, I could hear your guitar acoustically as loud as I could hear the amplifier. And I could hear it louder than right. I could hear it through the amplifiers, just to give you some idea. But we'll get into all of that as we go through the show. The title of this show is How Loud is Loud and Why Does It Matter? Uh, it's a subject very close to both Dan and my heart mm -hmm. and has been made ever more so by the recent experience of being stuck at home. Yes. Uh, yours has been, Dan? Well, because I've been recording and filming at home and, you know, recording with the ISO cab and trying to get it as real po as possible, and it's been fascinating. But coming back in here today and just hearing the amps, not, not crazy loud, but at our volume, and I was, I was tearing up mm. how much I'd missed it and how realising how important that interaction is to get uh, for the whole experience, you know? That, that's it, isn't it? So one of the things um, that certainly hit me during the whole uh, lockdown at home thing was I found myself using this guitar more right. than the Strat because at lower volumes I found I could feel something okay. through this guitar. And we're always talking about feel, right? Sound, let's talk about guitar tone for a second. A guitar sound is gain, mm -hmm. EQ, all the things that make up a sound. So when you stick your headphones on or your studio monitors or whatever it is you're listening to, your iPod or your... God, do iPods even exist anymore? Anyway, whatever you're listening to, you hear a sound, which is a, a combination of all of those factors. Yep. And if you're listening to Eddie Van Halen, that's all you're ever going to hear because he stood there in the studio, you're playing it, and you're sat on your sofa listening to your hi-fi system. If you're playing, however, everything changes because in addition to sound, we introduce feel. Mm. And feel is made up of a whole bunch of characteristics caused by physical happenings. Yes. Be they a speaker cabinet flapping its pants off or your pants off or the guitar resonating against, resonating against your body. And of course, all of these things are inextricably and symbiotically linked when it comes to the experience of playing guitar. Yeah. And I think one of the things, to just to make it a bit topical, one of the problems we all face now increasingly playing live is that we have to play either very, very quietly or silently. Except and drummers. <laughs> crack! 160 B. And, 
And Dan and I feel that something is being lost. Mm. Is that fair? Definitely. And and not just lost for the for the musicians on stage, but for the experience of the audience. You know, I'm not here advocating, um, you know, deafening volumes, but there's def- there's something has been with with the conversation that's happened. Uh, there's been compromise after compromise after compromise, and now we've got to a point where that physical experience of being in a situation where the volume can uh, play a pivotal role in the way that you experience music and the way that you experience guitar playing, that's basically been taken away. Mm. And I think, I know there's a there's a whole bunch of people who've never experienced it. Yeah. So what we're going to try and do is show you what happens, not just sonically, but that experience of what happens with volume when you're playing. Yes. Everything you hear in today's video will be roughly the same volume in your ears. Right, yeah. Save for the, if we turn the guitar up and down, you'll hear a, a relative up and down in that respect. But when we, let's, so let's explain what we're going to do. We've got two amps there. We've got a big amp, uh, two rock classic reverb signature. It's in 50 watt mode, which is loud enough. Oh, I'll put it in 100 just for a little bit. <laughs> And we've got a Fender Bass Breaker 15, and we're going to hear both of those amps side by side, quietly. Mm -hmm. We will pick an arbitrary medium volume, and then we will pick a loud volume. And the only reference you're going to get in your ears to how loud it is in the room is the dB meter at the back of the room there, which will tell the story. What we hope you'll hear is a great deal of difference in terms of tonal nuance, inflection, and the way that it affects the kind of things that Dan and I play. Yep. And in that, with that in mind, I had to write this down because it was sort of like a revelation. It's like the most obvious revelation in the world. Mm -hmm. You rewind for a second what we said at the top of the show about EQ, gain, yeah, those things primarily, is what, what determines the sound of your guitar. Sure. If you get that sound and you stick an attenuator on your amp and you turn it up and down, those things can remain virtually the same. Yep. Very similar. Yeah, sure. Certainly yep. for the in-ear experience. Yep. What totally changes beyond recognition are these other three things. Mm -hmm. One, how your guitar plays and reacts. Yes. So if you add volume, your guitar plays and reacts differently because of the physical coupling that's happening with the extra volume in the room. Yep. Most obvious example of that being feedback. Secondly, your playing will change in reaction and feel. Yes. Because as you heard on the beginning there, I can't hear the guitar well enough to hear if the notes are coming out. I started playing the intro. I literally couldn't do it. <laughs> and I stopped and just went, I, and asked Mick to, to take over. I couldn't do it. Uh, whereas at volume, obviously, that will change because the notes will sustain longer, different things happen, different yep. frequencies occur, etc., etc. So that's number two. One is your uh, your guitar. Second is your playing. And third is the rest of your gear. Mm. So believe it or not, let's take an example. That Thorpey Warthog will sound very different at 75 dB than it will at 100 dB. Yeah. So you've got these three, in addition to all the things you think make up sound, EQ, gain, some form of dynamic transients and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. In addition to that, you've got volume. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, I think volume is the most important one of all of them. Sure. In terms of how it affects your playing. Oh, massively. And it's the one thing you never hear on YouTube gear demos. Yeah. So hopefully the uh, the thing will, will tell the story. So... There we go then. Um, sound is one thing. Mm -hmm. Feel is the other. Mm -hmm. And I think those two things together is what equals guitar tone. Yeah, like it. Yeah? Like it. Very good. So there you go. I feel like James O'Brien on LBC <laughs> doing a monologue. It's great. Not quite as eloquently as him. But we are very passionate about it and we do think there is a, an optimum point, which is what we want to get to because... Mm. Just to finish the long monologue, the didactic reduction isn't loud is best because it can be too loud. So what we want to do yes. is try and explore what's too loud, what's too quiet, what feels good in between. And then as part of that whole discussion, 
if you can't play at 100 dB in your apartment, what are some of the things you can do to help it along? Love it. Very good. All right. Very Anyone good. I think it was the first day back, Dan. <laughs> okay, so the two amps we've got, we've got the two rock and we've got the bass breaker 15. Um, very, uh, very different amplifiers. You know, two rocks can do 100 watts. That's set at 50. Bass breaker 15 is 15 watts. Okay. But at this volume, how much of a difference does all the, you know, those amps make? Yeah, you're so, hearing you're hearing a bit of a difference in the cabinets, but um, play them down and, and let's let's see what we think. Okay, so. Okay, that's the two rock. They've hit output two for me. This is the bass break. You are actually struggling to play. I really am. Because it's so quiet. Yeah. All right, let's help you. Okay. <laughs> We've got all these make it easier devices on the pedal board here. I reckon get a bit of overdrive and a bit of delay on. And, okay. And see what happens. Okay. So, bit of tube dreamer. Whatever you fancy. So it feels like there's a bit of atmosphere now, you know, still the guitar is louder than what I'm hearing from the app. And what's coming out of yeah. there. So for example, I couldn't tell you, sat here, I couldn't tell you the, well, the Tube Dream was doing this specific job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I, it's, it's like there's a massive parallel blend going on between the this yeah. being the dry sound and that being the wet sound. Inter because you can hear the acoustic sound yeah. of the guitar so much. Yeah, interestingly. I'll try that with this in a minute, which obviously is a semi-acoustic guitar. By the way, I just want to say that the um, bit of tape on your glasses is really... <laughs> <laughs> like my Harry Potter tape. Like 1970s British shopkeeper. It's i got three pairs of broken glasses at home. <laughs> I've slowly been going through them. People have been sitting on them and stuff, so waiting for the uh, uh, the optician to open so we can go and get them sorted out. Okay. Till then. Anyway, right, okay. Um, same settings then on this. I'm going to try and play a little bit of uh, lead type stuff and just see what the how that happens. Okay. You know what the what the response under the fingers is like. Um... <laughs> Could you stick the effects on again, please? Sure. Just straight away, though, because I'm not playing and I'm just sat here listening and I can't hear the guitar through the plexi, it sounds great. Sounds nice. Yeah. Sounds nice from where I'm sat, right. actually. Right, OK. I, I suspect the recorded sound will be pretty nice. So you want the Tube Dreamer yeah. to play? Yeah, I think that was it, wasn't it? Yep. So this is the Two Rock. <laughs> Sounds good. It sounds really good from where I'm sat. Okay. It's, it, I am struggling a little bit to play because a lot of the things I'm used to happening with the guitar aren't happening because there's not enough interaction of the guitar and the speaker for the guitar to really start moving. Sure. So I'm having to think really carefully about all the notes I play. <laughs>
so funny that that vibrating airy thing really lends itself to this low volume thing yeah you can you can feel it a bit more just to round that out then before we change the volumes let me see if my own hypothesis feel much more through the 335 unsurprisingly sure. but again it sounds pretty nice so it is interesting um this may come up during this discussion but there's something uh, an effect phenomenon called the fletcher munson curve mm -hmm. which at lower volumes you kind of need more bass and treble right in order for them to be more to audible. at the same level as when they're low. Yeah, yeah yeah so i'm hearing quite a flat sound from where yeah. i stood yeah yeah the mics may well be telling a different story okay so, Dan, you can choose what happens next. We either go, we skip the mid-range bit and go to full volume and then come down from there, or we go up to the mid-range bit next. Shall we... Ah. Oh, shall we go loud? I think so, because I think loud. that's where the contrast will be, and then we can find a place okay. where it works. Let's, let's go loud. Right, next time you'll see us, <laughs> we'll be loud. Right, just to explain what's happened, we haven't changed anything on the pedals. All we've done is turn the amps up, and in so doing, we've turned the preamp gain on the uh, preamps that are on the end of the microphones down. So hopefully the sound in your ears ought to be about the same volume. Mm -hmm. However... The dB meter will tell a very different story. Right. Can you, Dan? Can you do? <laughs> You're brave waggling that. <laughs> I'm um, changing guitar right now. Bass breaker. Okay. <laughs> the keen eyed among you will notice that Dan broke a string there. And let's change guitars for this red one. So um, back to the two rock. Is it two rock on two or one? On one. It's on one. Yep. <laughs> So is that amp cranked? That's it. That's as loud as the bass breaker will go. So, uh, I mean, we've done this very deliberately because clearly there's a point beyond which you don't really want to push an amp. I think it sounds pretty good. Okay. But it's not doing the same thing. Really isn't doing the same thing. You have a go, man. That's crazy good. Okay, so uh, can I have the tube dreamer on, please? Yep. <laughs>
you dream wrong. Just wow. I'm not putting that on. I'm not doing anything that I would have done differently on the bass breaker. The bass breaker sounded really cool and it was at the end of its place. And there was still, with those two pedals on, volume controls on this guitar, mm -hmm. there was a lot of chewiness, a lot of texture, a lot of touch. There was feedback happening. Yep. yep. That was a, a really killer sound. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the DB meter was saying, probably about 100 and something. Was it Simon 101? Uh, 101. Yeah, which is kind of where it's... That's it, there's no more. No more, yeah. This is not about going, oh, wow, the Two Rock's an amazing amp. It's saying an amp with much greater headroom, mm. doing exactly the same thing, a little bit more volume. The dynamic range, the tonal range, everything it enables you to do as a player, you can just sit back a little bit. Yeah. You don't have to work anywhere near as hard. No, you really don't. A fascinating thing, though, with that volume, what you're playing, I'm dragged along with you right. in that experience. You know what I mean? Because that that sound pressure level, I'm caught up in that. And you'll hit one out of just, and it's like, oh, it's, it's great. Um, whereas I'm not experiencing that, yeah. anything yeah. like that. I'm going, yeah, that sounds cool. But at that level, emotionally, I am bought into the picture. You know, 
Do you remember there was a really fantastic documentary that Channel 4, we've talked about this before, Channel 4 did it back in the, I want to say late 80s, but it may well have been the early 90s, called Twang Bang Kerrang. No, I I remember you talking about it. And Andy Summers had recently, fairly recently taken delivery of his Bradshaw rack or something, or it might have been Pete Cornish one anyway, and he was stood there stepping through sounds and doing cool things. Anyway, Andy Summers said it takes great sensitivity to be able to play at high volume. Yeah. And that, definitely what I what I found, and that's been part of this whole discovery of, of playing at home, not fighting the guitar. Because if you fight the guitar when it's quiet, all you get is less, I find. Right. But in this context, the whole thing has just got more room. Mm. So you can, you just don't have to work so hard yeah and it's all here but back you know back to what we said at the top of the show what's changed the volume of the amp has changed that has fundamentally changed the tone of everything yeah in terms of how all the pedals react Mm -hmm. how your guitar reacts and how you react yeah which is just to make that point that for those of us chasing that amazing cranked plexi tone or that amazing loud amp tone, you stick an attenuator on your amp and go, I want that exact sound, but at this volume. You're not, you're taking away 75% of what makes that sound. Yeah. Which is all of what we've just discussed. Yeah. Daniel, before we, because playing at that level, mm-hmm is insane. Virtually no one can do that anymore. Right. If anyone's playing that loud at a gig, they've got plexi panels in front of their amps. Um, Matt Schofield plays that loud. Dor Bramble plays that loud. How loud were we? 108, maybe. Okay. It was loud. Okay. Although I would... Sorry, this I could talk for days about this. You play that volume sensitively Yeah. with a decent band, it's going to be loud, but it's not 108 dB all the time yes of course it's 108 db for one bar yeah just when you're digging in (laughs) or five (laughs) (laughs) or an indeterminate number if you can count bars as well as i can yeah but um it's just really hard when you with that it's really hard impossible to differentiate between the sound and the experience they are symbiotic yeah i I am a, a massive believer that there is sound and there is feel and those two things together create tone yeah yeah, man, that's and I think I would it moving would also say however good the two rock sounded at the low volume, you might not have thought it did. It was certainly a bit flat sounding to me. Mm. An amp like that comes into its own. Well, it's turned up at this volume. Yeah. Whereas the bass breaker sounds great as that it sounds. It's past its. Yes. For, for my personal yeah, yeah. It's, it's there's no headroom left. Yeah. There's no dynamics left. It is, it's flat chat. Oh, it's giving everything it's got. Yeah. It's got nothing left. Which if you're Neil Young, you know, that might be exactly what you're after. Sure. But which is not to say that one is better or one is worse. It's more understand this is how it works. Yes. Yeah. Fair? Absolutely. Dan, Hang do you want to, did you have a go with the Warthog and the uh, Lucy Dreamer? No, I didn't. Just try this and see what you think. Because I discovered this combination being at home, a, a Tube Screamer type and the Warthog. Okay. And the Warthog's not doing very much. Okay. Let me um, just uh, see what we turn see. that one off for a second. So have a, have a bit of that as well.
far out. I just, I probably, because it's so uh, enveloping, but I get carried away, and I probably, because I'm so excited, there are moments where I just let it take me away. In moments I get too excited, I probably play things I shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I mean? That's part of it, isn't it? But boy, oh boy, that that experience literally has had my heart going. Yeah. And, you know, you can hear my voice shaking a little bit because yeah. you get so wrapped up in that whole yeah. thing. And it's, of course, it sounds amazing, but that's just an essential part of what is going on to make me feel like that. And I couldn't, and the thing is, the the bits that I played there that were, you know, nice and melodic or whatever, I don't play like that quiet. I'm searching, constantly searching, going, oh. That's you know. it, isn't it? That, for me, that Man. is such a key part of the whole thing where the sound is what's determining. Because, you know, when we're all starting out playing the guitar, you learn something to play. And when you know how to play that, you, you buy a new amp and a new pedal and you play the same thing. Mm. Then 25 years down the line, you realise you've, you've learnt a lot of stuff and it, the sound can bring those things out of you that maybe you had forgotten or maybe that have just meshed into something new. Mm. That's the whole thing about sound-inspiring playing. And I, you know, as a non-contentious point, I don't believe that this silent world that everyone's playing in is an environment where that can come out in any way the same as it can when there's physical reaction of guitars and amps and speakers. Absolutely. But, you know, just the crowd, you know, being brought along that journey with you. Yeah. As opposed to, um, can you ask the band to turn down? I'm struggling to hear the conversation. <laughs> and, you know, not, you know, look, the gigs are awesome, you know, and those experiences I think are really valuable. Um, but, you know, if you go to a proper rock gig with the, you know, where there is sound pressure level, and you've got, of course, you've got to watch your hearing and, you know, that sort of stuff. But oh, yeah, we haven't even talked about no. that. No. Of course you've got to watch your hearing, and of course you need to protect your hearing, but hopefully we, that goes as red, but... Yeah. I just, it's so moving. It's All right. so moving. Well, seeing as it's first day back after um, lockdown and we're filming, I just want to hear the strat through the two rock with a fuzz... Um, before we oh, yeah, decide we the next thing will be where can we get you know how far can we come down and still keep the feel and what can we do to try and keep some of that feel yep. without it being insane which is kind of what it is currently wow There's the intro. <laughs> B, can you explain what happens to a strat at volume? Because when 
like when I hear that, that's what I think most people would relate to an, like an absolutely epic Strat sound. And it doesn't happen at, you know, at really quiet volumes. Yeah, I don't know. I hope that translated to the recording because I noticed the mics were getting up there a bit and we have noticed that once we start hitting these with that, because that was insanely loud. It was just... But it wasn't uncomfortable. No. I would sat here going, there have been moments in here where it hasn't been that loud where I've been really uncomfortable. Mm. That was not uncomfortable. Yeah. It was just... It's like a massive wave of just awesomeness. <laughs> it was just awesome. But the thing is, there's things happening with your strat at that volume, yeah, yeah. the sustain and the notes blooming and the one you attack that I don't hear when it's really quiet. Yeah, yeah. But I, that's that's part of the sound thing. People hear that sound and go, that's the strat tone I'm looking for. I'm sure it's a dynamic range thing. I'm sure that, yeah, the strat can just keep getting louder and louder and louder and right. more dynamic when right. most guitars run out a bit like the old bass breaker there, you know? It's, yes, it's right. hit its ceiling okay. and it's run out. So... All right, okay, that was a bit of indulgence. Oh, stop it. That's for, awesome. Forgive Just us. Just awesome. First day back. So let's let's go. Fair enough. I, uh, hopefully no one disagrees that that is not a very inspiring place to be and it does sound really lovely, but it's not in any way realistic for most people most of the time. Okay. So let's let's see where we can get to. Okay, and keep that vibe. Let's see where we can still feel it, where the guitar's still reacting, okay. where it's still happening, and see where we can come down to. Okay. Yeah? Yep. So this is going to involve Dan playing, me turning the amps down, and probably running backwards and forwards to the uh, machine there to turn the mic preamps up and down, because we don't have Fraser today. We're trying to keep everything at a minimum so that um, social distancing and all that. So whatever happened, it just died. You've gone to 50 watts. Was I on 100 before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to turn it down. I want to try and get us down to about 90. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
coming from that crazy big sound, it is going to take just a minute, isn't it, to, to re-center. And not feel sad. And not feel sad. Okay. <laughs> but, okay, so that was the first. Would you mind putting the Warthog and the um, Tube Dreamer on together again? Because yep. that, was, that was a sound we quite liked. Yep. Is that just is that the amp? Do you think? Because even though the, we've turned it down, it's still overdriving quite a bit. The amp. Yeah. Uh, you held a note there, and it just kind of bloomed. That the, the high th yeah. feed feedbacky thing. Uh, and on the bottom, the, it was a low. Yeah, note. I think well that coupled with the gain in the amplifier, so it's it's really compressing and just looking for those. See if see if that happens in the two rock a minute. With the. Uh, yeah, it was the tube dreamer. Tube dreamer the so not at that level so where that bass pack is obviously designed to work at that lower level and so even at that level it's still compressing mm. you know what i mean it's still and and so it can pick up on those harmonics and you still get that loop that's, that's a, one one thing i really discovered about the mesa california tweed when I, when I was using it at home is that i didn't take the two rock home because it sort of almost doesn't work at this volume right I mean, it does work it still sounds great especially for clean sounds but you don't get that sort of harmonic thing it really does need to be and that's really a note about the appropriateness of your amp, because a lot of people just buy an amp on volume alone. Well, as we've proved, we've matched these amps almost. Yeah. Bass breaker ran out, but certainly in the mid and the low volume levels, they're the same volume, but they sound so different because of the headroom characteristics. Wildly different. Stepping on the toes of lots of other shows there. I'll join the 335 again a sec, Dan. Yep. And just see if at this volume, you know, at wherever we started at 75. Also, don't take these dB meter readings as kind of measured by men in white coats or mm. women in white coats or they in white coats um, in some science experiment. We don't know how accurate it is and it is back there out of the way. So it, all it is is a constant. It's not necessarily scientifically correct. Let's try this. Um, yeah, give us the Warthog and the Tube Dreamer again. joke sorry <laughs> you hear how that's slightly caving in a bit at the bottom yeah a bit scrappy that's why I paired the Warthog with a Tube Screamer type to make it sound a bit more like an amp. That's breaking up. That's breaking up yeah, and caving yeah, in a bit. Yeah. Don't know what the DB meter is saying, but I can definitely feel that. Right. 
that feels really nice to play. It feels buttery under the fingers. Have you have you sort of decompressed from the really loud? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I okay. mean, it, it's not feeding back as it, as eagerly as it was. Right. <laughs> Nice sound, actually. It's lovely. Uh, just try the bass breaker with that same pedal pairing. That's great, too. Really cool. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the having the the tube screamer at the end of that chain is basically giving that sort of break up. It's sort of rounding off those edges. The same thing that would happen when you turn the amplifier up. Feels like that. Yeah. Feels just doing that. I mean, have a quick go on. Let that. me give we, it. Yeah, give we, it. We, we really should talk out. about some clean sounds in a sec, but. Interesting that I'm not getting the same feedback from this as I was getting on the Telecaster. We play a couple of clean sounds because yep. we've done we've done quite a lot of gainy stuff. I want keep playing mm -hmm. and let those notes ring. Mm -hmm. I want to see how loud we've got to go till we start getting that before the the feedback starts happening. Okay. Bear in mind that proximity to the amp is all you know is is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. So it might be that this will happen for you at lower volumes depending on your EQ settings and where you are in relation to the amp. But given that we've done everything like this. Um, I'll just take a few dB off the uh, mic input and we'll see. Okay. To where that, that, where that starts happening, yeah.
All the feels, baby. All the feels. Now, there is a considerable variance here, right? So when we were trying to be around 90, you'll notice that some of the peaks hit 95. Mm. 5 dB is a lot. It's a huge amount. Especially at that volume. Yes. Um, logarithmic scale, obviously. Um, so try not to focus on the peaks and try and focus on kind of where it was centering. Mm -hmm. So when we started off and the guitar wasn't really feeding back, we were down at around 90. Okay. And then as I started to turn it up, where the feedback started happening, that was happening around 100. Oh, so man. 98 to 100. All I would say about that, if somebody measures, if somebody sticks up a dB meter at the back of your gig and measures 102 dB, they're going to shut you down. Right. Because I think a lot of gigs are much less than that, aren't they? Right. Bear in mind, that dB meter is there. It's right by right the, amps. the amps. Yeah. And we're in a sealed box here, so it, <clears throat> it's not going to read that 10 meters down the, down the hall. Yeah. Just to make that point. However, what I can tell you is that the volume that that amp was set at there, in all the bands I've ever been in, would be a perfectly acceptable level to play. Yeah, yeah. It, for, a, for a lead guitar solo. Of course. Not all night. You don't want to be banging away power chords that volume all night. Sure. But over the snare drum and the cymbals, I've played considerably louder than that regularly. Yeah. So just to put some of that context on it. So yes, banging away at 100 dB at home might be challenging, mm -hmm. but in the rehearsal space, at gigs. And what was the difference for you? When the when there's volume and there's interaction, I am led by the sound. When there's not, I'm literally thinking about every note that I'm playing. Yeah. And and that's cool. And I was like, yeah, man, that's, that's cool. You know, and it's fun. But when you started turning up, I was starting to hear the front of the note. I'm hearing those transients. And just, you know, the sustain and the tone, I'm being led yeah, yeah. by the sound. And that's a whole different experience because I've stopped, sort of stopped thinking mm. and just sort of, uh, you know, let the, that sound sort of lead me as to what to play. Yeah. If you've been doing it all your life or for a lot of your life, to play really quietly is borderline impossible. Mm. And I should imagine that if you've been playing really quietly all your life, playing really loud is borderline impossible. Yeah. Because it, it, it just requires, it's a different instrument, isn't it, at sure. that point? If you're if you're if you're trying to do your um, your scales and that like you know like really loud, it's really really hard because the ant doesn't you know the ant takes time to react. You'll notice I don't play any of that stuff. <laughs> um, okay, let's finish off then. We've done lots and lots of gain sounds. Let's do a few clean sounds. Okay, and see because I really want to hear this compadre. Yes, and I think. This might help us a bit to okay. talk about some clean sounds yep, for a second. Perfect. Yep. So uh, I don't think we need to change anything. We can just get into it, Dan. Okay. Okay, so even at quiet volume, stacking a couple of overdrive pedals gives you all the sustain you need. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can choose to use a compressor as a stylistic addition if you want, but actually a couple of overdrive pedals, you're never going to be wanting for sustain, even, no. at, even at low volume. Would you agree with that? Um, yeah. With As long as the, you've got uh, enough sort of mid-range in the amplifier as well. Mm. You know, it's got to be sympathetic to the sympathetic to the resonant frequencies that's coming out of the guitar. As long as you've got enough mid-range there, then yeah, sustain for days. Let's have a look at some clean sounds then just to finish off. Okay. Uh, we've got the bass breaker set up currently. Give that a whack, can you, Dan? I just want to see, make sure we've got the... Bass Breaker's master volume is currently on 10. It's yes. as loud as it'll go, and right. the gain is at about, I don't know, 9 o'clock in the low gain setting. Mm -hmm. Shall we add some ambience? Yeah. Uh, so let's add a bit of uh, delay.
Pretty playable. Beautiful. Try two rock. Wow. Nice, isn't it? That's too loud for home. What do I play when I play clean stuff? I want a, want a bit of a kind of a... What there is there in both amps, to me anyway, is mm. enough chewiness. Okay. Yep. Uh, the, the transients are a little bit hard, maybe in the two rock especially. In the okay. bass breaker, there just feels a bit more give. Right. There's so much headroom in the two rock. Yeah. Like the the dynamic range when you just pop a note and just go bang. Yeah. It's like amazing. Which at this kind of volume is problematic, right? Because mm. if you sat there at your in your apartment or wherever, then that's just too much. Sure. To take. Let's take the volume down, and I think what's going to happen is that natural sustain and loveliness is going to go away, mm -hmm. so we're going to add some. Okay. Let me just check where we're peaking at the moment. That's a lot louder than we're playing, but still kind of loud for home. Okay. How does yeah. it how does it feel under the fingers? Uh, feels it's okay. It just feels um, it's lost all the chewiness. Yeah, a lot of the treble's gone away, hasn't it? Isn't that weird? Yeah. Oh, I, I thought that would come back, but... It's like a Fletcher Munson thing. Yes, it's really interesting, that. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, okay, so I haven't... Have I turned the two rock down yet? No. Try the two rock. Again, the transients on that feel pretty spiky. Yeah. Yeah, 
yeah, it's not too bad, but let's, what mode are we in? The uh, squishy mode. Squishy mode. <laughs> that all day yeah it sounds amazing took it out of the um squish mode squish mode like dynacomp type thing yep. i don't know if that is what it's trying to do put it in a more studio -y type mode which tends to be faster attack uh and release time um and it just really have a go on that man see what you think Very nice, man. Just beautiful. Um, it's, so what is really interesting with that a little bit more squish, you, you know, when that amp is loud, that's what happens naturally. Now, you don't get that, that bottom end thing, but you do get that, that feel under your fingers where you can 
you can dig in a little bit hard, play a little bit soft, and you don't get that crazy dynamic range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, and then nothing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, that's what a compressor does, and anyone who uses one regularly will know that. Um, that is really lovely, that compressor. What is it you say, Dan? What's the compressor? It's your overdrive for your clean sound. Yeah, because that's what an overdrive does in your overdrive sound, right? It takes out the transients, and it kind of just smooths everything out, gives you a bit more sustain. All right, um... Long one today. Mm. What have we learned? Loud is good. Louder well, is more good. I, I would say louder is gooder. <laughs> to a point. Oh, it's just... Look. It's... It's that thing that made you want to play guitar in the first place. It is. You know? It is. And, it, it you know, in some ways it is a bit of a manifesto because... A lot of people watching this might feel a bit aggrieved that you don't get to play loud a lot and that hurts a bit because, you know, if you don't get to play loud, you are missing out a little bit, I would say. Yeah. Which is why you should be in a band, go to a rehearsal room and play as loud as you can all the time. That aside, um, I genuinely believe and Dan genuinely believes that the silent stage thing mm -hmm. and the reduction, the continual reduction of on stage volume, in ear monitors and all the rest of it is fundamentally changing the character of the electric guitar. And we've proved that today a little bit. Which isn't to say, like a, a Dumbbell with an EV speaker in 1983 at 112 dB on stage is the right thing. Yeah, of course. It's clearly not. There is clearly a point somewhere between really loud and really quiet that you will find a comfortable and enjoyable place to play mm. that most important of all brings some creativity out of you and makes you feel connected and into the music mm -hmm. i'd like to see it return a bit absolutely you know yeah i just you know i just would like people to at least experience it experience that difference in dynamic experience being wrapped up in the sound, yeah, you know, and have the guitar reacting dynamically with the volume coming out of the amplifier and experience what that's like to play. Reconnect it. Yep. Reconnect you, the music, the guitar, the speaker, and all the rest of it. Just reconnect it up there so it's all in the same place doing the same thing. And you don't have to play at 103 dB all night. You could do it for four bars. Yeah. But those four bars will just be magical. Yes, I just or I keep want to start. I keep want to say that you know we're not advocating play crazy loud all the time. We no. are saying having some volume so that it interacts with you. And it the just guitar. means that you've got for those moments. It just means you've got somewhere to go. Yeah, yeah, and it does fundamentally change everything. So the idea of having a really great loud guitar sound and attenuating it down is not the same thing. No, it just isn't. It does not work the same way through the resonance of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, well, Dan, we've oh, almost got political. Man, I loved that. It was the right show to do first day back, wasn't yeah. it? We both needed to have our bones shaking a bit. Yeah. That, I've got to say, though, I know it's, you know, we've, it's not specifically about sound, you know, but the sound of that thing <laughs> on 100 watts like that. There's something else. Oh, my word. Good. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. Uh, Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Would be Pedal Empire to Matt and the gang. Hello. And uh, our mates at Sweetwater. Indeed. We have some links in the description. Yep. Anything that you heard takes your fancy, you want to check it out, if you click on that link, it'll take you through to Sweetwater. Click them, Dan and I can build the gold clon-shaped mansion. Awesome. that we've been dreaming of ever since we started TPS. Yes. We've got some cement. <laughs> no gold yet. Massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed a T-shirt and DNM drives and books and... All that stuff. Hoodies and the stuff. Hoodies are really nice. The hoodies are lovely, actually. Mm. Really great. Um, yes, subscribe, all that stuff. Have a fantastic week, guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.